Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details Webinar. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, once you are a uh, member in trial, uh, you have access to not only Bookmap, but uh, the uh, uh, other resources that are available. Uh, for example, there is the Advanced Order Flow Analysis Webinar. Uh, at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, so in about uh, 27 minutes or so. Uh, concept behind that is uh, understand first the platform, uh, what bookmap is, what is displaying, uh, and then um, uh, ask any questions here because there are a lot of features and functionality. Uh, and then secondly, uh, in, the, in the next webinar, once you are in trial, you'll be beyond that and you'll be interested in not those questions you'll be interested in reading the order flow and applying it to your trading, all right? So that's why we're making the distinction um, between the two webinars. Uh, so let's um, let's take a look here. Um, go to bookmap.com uh, and um, wanted to show you a few things. Uh, we're not data providers. Uh, you will need to uh, have your own data provider. So uh, connectivity, you can see the list here of uh, different um, uh, brokers, uh, as well as the different um, uh, data feeds that uh, uh, we support. Okay, pricing. Uh, here's where you can find Bookmap for that trial. Okay, there's two versions of Bookmap: the Bookmap Basic and the Advanced. Uh, you get 14-day trial period uh, for each of them, or, or one or the other. Uh, and um, the difference between the two uh, are the add-ons and the ability to trade from the chart here. All right. Now, if you're interested in uh, the DX feed, there's a package deal here for basic and advanced as well. The difference here um, uh, is that with the DX feed is, is this is for U.S. equities only. Okay, we're, we're not a data provider. Uh, we've partnered with uh, DX feed uh, just to offer the uh, U.S. equities, and that's it. Okay, it's not about... Um, uh, the uh, futures, uh, it does the DX feed. It does not offer the futures. Okay, if you want the futures, you got to come up here and you got to have one of these data uh, providers that we support. Uh, William, okay, uh, let's see here. You'd like to know how to read and interpret correctly the red numbers, please. Um, yeah, okay, I'll get into that. Uh, just a minute here, um, and. Um, Okay, so bookmap basic and advanced, and then there's packaged here with the DX feed. Now, if you want U.S. equities and you already, um, uh, you just want the basic or advanced here, you don't want the package deal, you can still get DX feed um, monthly. Uh, so uh, uh, bookmap basic and advanced, it is billed quarterly. So note that it's for three months each. Uh, and um, uh, the DX feed will be uh, an add-on. You will add it on to bookmap basic or advanced. Okay. And uh, I believe it's 59 a month. Okay. All right. You can follow us here on Twitter. I get most up-to-date information here. Uh, and then you can also subscribe to our YouTube page. All sorts of videos and resources here. Uh, I would recommend uh, if you guys are uh, looking further into Bookmap, start with the, the – um, well, start first with the uh, uh, intro video. Uh, know what you're looking at, uh, and then next, uh, start to go through the features and components here, okay? The Bookmap 6.0 overview, start there, uh, and then um, uh, there are many here as well. There are some of the selected webinars. If you want to look at some of the advanced webinars, uh, you can see that they are here as well as the platform details, okay? Uh, and then uh, we have a professional trader, uh, Futures Trader 71 here. Uh, and uh, you have some of his webinars if you want to see how he uses Bookmap. Okay, these order flow video snippets these are very short, concise, and informative. Uh, they go through what you're looking at in the order flow. Uh, now, uh, these videos are a good resource. Uh, it is uh, what we cover in detail in the advanced webinar uh, that starts in about um, uh, 23 minutes or so. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at Bookmap. All right, we're looking at the S&P E-mini, and uh, wow, we just keep on seeing uh, the uh, all stock indexes climbing to uh, new highs. All right, pretty pretty good stuff. 
uh, and um, uh, the uh, uh, I'll, I'll get into uh, what, what we're looking at here uh, in the in um, in the order flow and 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 look at the basics uh, of Bookmap. Start at the drill down to the very very um, basics of um, what you're looking at here, and then we're going to add on layers of uh, a detail. All right, and and data. Uh, let me get to uh, your your questions here, William. Um, okay, there's a red number here that you see. Okay, in a, in the current order book, uh, uh, and it's displayed as either. Uh, you, in, you just right click in here, uh, and you'll see like um, uh, it's displayed as bars or bars and numbers. Okay, if it says numbers, it won't be shown here. All right, um, and uh, what this is is this is actually our older iceberg detector indicator. Okay, it's an add-on for the book map advanced. Uh, now we kept it uh, just to um, uh, you know because uh, traders were uh, still accustomed to it, so we kept it. Um, but uh, we have a new iceberg indicator here. Okay, and it's this red and green number that you see on the historical chart. This is much better, much more accurate. Uh, you can see uh, exactly where these icebergs took place. Whereas the red numbers here, if price comes back down and refreshes that level, this red number will uh, disappear. Okay, so uh, on the historical chart, though, it doesn't. Okay, so you see it here. Okay, this, that should answer your question, uh, uh, William. Um, Yeah. Okay, uh, William. Uh, I, I'll answer your your question about what Bookmap is representing here as I go through the uh, the demo. Uh, so uh, uh, this will. Uh, I'm glad you're in. Uh, we'll go through uh, uh, the, the the process here, and uh, you'll understand exactly what Bookmap is here. Oh, we do we do analysis on crude oil um, several times. Uh, it really depends on what's moving, what looks good. Um, you know, the um, uh, crude oil here, we, we can we can see that. I was looking at it earlier. Uh, we saw the breakout here. I, or at least I saw the breakout here at 50 and above. So it's off to the upside. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we can, we can cover that uh, as well. Um, I cover it many times. Um, just uh, whatever uh, traders are mostly looking at is uh, uh, what we want to go over. All right. Uh, so it comply applies to their trading and most most traders are looking at the stock indexes all right but uh, we're ha I'm happy to look at other other markets as well and we do we do all the time okay um, all right so uh, let's go through this process we're gonna turn on candlesticks and I'm gonna turn off everything else all right so we're looking at a five minute candlestick chart here and let me actually even get rid of uh, you want to look at, uh, Yonel, you want to look at the uh, uh, NASDAQ as well. Okay. Um, I think you're in the uh, advanced um, uh, order flow analysis too, Yonel. If, um, if so, then I can, I can cover, uh, we can cover it there. Uh, but uh, no, not yet. Okay. Um, but, um, well, let's uh, we'll just start off here and, and go through it um, and um, uh, look at the S&P for now. All right. Uh, and then maybe uh, if I go through here quickly enough, uh, we can look at uh, briefly at oil and uh, and the NQ. All right. OK. Five minute candlestick chart. Now, five minute candlestick chart is only showing you four data points. Open, high, low, close. OK. And we're making financial decisions based on that. And that's not good. There is so much more going on here, and and we have uh, we have no idea uh, where traders have committed themselves. Uh, we have no idea uh, uh, about the uh, the traded volume, uh, what type of volume, where it took place, when it took place, how fast it took place. Uh, all of this information is pertinent uh, to understanding uh, the uh, pressures in the market. Okay, we have a volume sub column here. This is what most traders look at, all right? Or in, in many derivatives of time, price, and volume. Um, really, um, uh, that's kind of an issue as well. The problem is the derivative of that is usually lagging. Uh, you, um, 
uh, you'll get a calculation and uh, you're way behind the curve before, uh, before the moves start to happen. That's why we want to look at the order flow and that's why we want to look at book map period because uh, it solves a lot of these issues of market transparency. For example, the volume. Okay, so let's go over here and we're going to turn on the just the historical best bid and offer and we already have insight. All right. I can see a little double double bottom test here. Very curious to see what uh, what occurred here. I imagine we're going to see some some heavier volume here and very light volume on this pullback here. And probably right around in this area, we're going to see aggressive buy orders sweeping the book higher. Okay, uh, up into uh, higher areas. OK, sweeping of the book is a concept that uh, we also go over in the advanced webinars. All right. Uh, so I, I won't cover it here. We're just going to go through the basics. Uh, and then you can see we based here for a bit and then broke out again of this little structure, okay, which you can't really see in the uh, in the candlesticks. And we continue higher. OK, so let's turn on the volume and see where people are committed. All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's zoom in. I'm going to click on the hand tool. Uh, and then uh, zoom into this area here with my center mouse wheel. Here's what uh, more or less exactly what I was looking for. Uh, heavier volume on the way down here. We see nice uh, cluster of uh, market sell uh, volume here. Uh, on the retest though, look at the, some of these areas here, very little selling, and then they started to hit the bid with aggressive market buys here. So let's zoom into this area, and what do I mean by uh, aggressive market buys? Okay, here in this area, historical best bid and offer. That's all this is, okay? Uh, and um, uh, best bid is uh, the green line, best offer uh, is the red line. Now, most of us know that information, okay? Now, we use the aggressive classification of volume. So if you hit the market buy button, you're going to get filled on the best offer and you're gonna take liquidity from there uh, from the trader that is offering there, uh, and a green dot will appear, okay? Uh, and um, aggressive sell would be a market sell, and it takes liquidity off of the best bid. Okay, you can use the rollover tool here uh, to uh, see exactly what traded, okay? It gives me the date, the time, what was on the offer or ask at this price level, and the volume. So this was for a volume of three. This one here was a volume of one, uh, and one, uh, look at the bigger dot here. There's, there's both buying and selling in here. Okay. And that was for a volume of 511 overall. Okay. Most of this is aggressive buying though. That's what's lifting the offer. Uh, and, uh, that's a great insight here, uh, to, um, uh, you know, where, where traders are, are committing, uh, their money, uh, in these markets. Okay. You're not going to see that in the candlestick chart. That's the problem. Uh, and um, uh, let's see here. We even get a nice little little pullback here with very little uh, or none uh, of none, no selling here at all. Okay. So now we have an understanding of what occurred down at this little swing. Okay. Candlestick charts not showing any of that. Okay. Even if you're looking at, uh, for example, a, um, a footprint chart which shows the the aggressor. Okay, it shows the aggressive buying and selling. This little microstructure is not going to show. It's going to aggregate all of this data together, and uh, uh, you you won't you won't see it. So this is giving more transparency and clarity uh, than a footprint chart. Okay, if you want the exact numbers, well, you can use the rollover tool. Okay, uh, and hover over the volume dots. You can just look at it visually and understand that. Uh, Looking at the pie display, for example, in these in these areas here, more buying than selling, a little more selling than buying here, and then more buying than selling. Okay. If I continue to zoom in, note that we'll break apart all of that trading activity, uh, and um, uh, this is what really occurred here. Okay. And we're down now at uh, mil uh, microsecond level, so we can see. Every single market event, okay, it's all recorded in Bookmap. This is a lot of data, okay. Now we don't trade off of millions of seconds, okay. The algos do, uh, but uh, and we can start to see some of that algorithmic activity here. Uh, but uh, we zoom out though and note how we're giving you the overall delta of the volume that occurred here, okay. We know that three quarters of this was aggressive buying. That is helpful for us, okay. 
and as we zoom out, we get a, a, a picture of where the volume traded, how much, uh, how quickly these moves took place in the microstructure, and what type of volume it is, aggressive buying or selling. That is a lot of insight. Okay, so uh, William, that should answer your question on the uh, on the volume, what the dots are, uh, what they represent, and how to start to read them. Okay, and uh, getting into some of the details about reading them, well, that's uh, that's uh, more geared for the for the next webinar. Um, the um, uh, now, sh showing the volume is uh, essential. Uh, it, it it gives a lot of uh, a lot of insight here. Uh, and um, uh, just by reading this little area here, we can see the bullish activity. Uh, the um, uh, now let's go to the current market. Okay, so in the current market, uh, this is the uh, uh, current market window here. We have the the dashed lines here are the best bid and offer right now uh, in this market. Okay, and this number is the last traded volume uh, in this market. Okay, so. Uh, usually what we want to understand is not only the volume, but we want to understand the, uh, the limit order book. The COB here, this is your limit order book in book map. Okay, this is your dome uh, here. Now, we, I have two of them. One is at bars only. One is as numbers split out to represent the uh, regular dome. Uh, we have all sorts of volume columns here. This is a chart range volume column. This is a session range volume column. Okay, so we're at the high of the day here for the cash session. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, looking at the volume and uh, it is good. Looking at the dome gives us insight to where the traders are lined up to deal in the auction. Okay, this is the next level of insight. Uh, we can see here 1,600 contracts, over 1,600 at 95. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's good information. We know that um, uh, the, the sellers are up here. Okay, if the market wants to come up and, and, and uh, uh, you know hit the majority of these sellers, they're up here. We can also see almost 1,400 contracts a tick below, and then 1,100 contracts. Okay, uh, so it's um, it's getting kind of thick in this area here. Now the problem with this dome is you're going to have to remember level of 95, how long these guys were here. Uh, with all of these contracts, uh, did they add, uh, did they pull as price started coming up toward them? And where did they move to? Did they add or pull above or below? If it's below, it's more aggressive. Uh, they really want to sell. They're kind of chasing the market. Uh, so um, uh, that's a lot of insight, and it's great insight uh, in the current market. The problem is here, you're going to have to remember all of that data. Okay. And uh, this is where Bookmap solves that issue because we take this data and we give it a, uh, a graphical representation in the heat map. All right. So this will answer uh, your next question, uh, William. Uh, the, uh, the heat map here. Okay. In the current market window, uh, when you see the liquidity change, you're going to see the heat map change. It's going to represent the uh, high liquidity. Okay. So 1,600 contracts is bright white. We can see it right here. Uh, 13, almost 1,400, uh, one tick below is, is, is bright white too. Now we can, um, you know, very easily uh, filter uh, the heat map uh, to give much more insight. But um, I just want to, uh, to bring that up just to show you uh, that uh, all the data is here. All right. Uh, but um, uh, then <coughs> it's really up to you uh, to what setting uh, you want to look at and understand um, some of the uh, behavior of the auction. Okay, so uh, you'll see the uh, the heat map change uh, when the liquidity changes. Now, when that happens, uh, uh, it uh, all of this data here is recorded, okay, and is projected onto the chart historically. So when you see that liquidity change, you'll see a striation in the heat map. So these striations that you see here is the adding and pulling of liquidity. Okay. And now what this allows us to do is look at the historical limit order book. We can see where they're lining up to trade and we can understand their behavior uh, in the limit order book. Okay. So we can see that price came up into this area here uh, and uh, they started to add in a little bit actually. So they want to sell it looks like. 
Now, price is coming up again, and we'll see if these guys at 94 and three quarters want to sell. Okay, they're adding in a little bit right now. It's getting a little bit brighter. These guys at 95 are still here. Okay, so um, uh, now we can start to gauge the auction and the intent of the sellers up here. All right, so that's the complete picture, very objective, complete picture of this market uh, condition current market condition and historical market condition. All right, so it looks like there's a lot going on here. It's actually pretty simple stuff uh, and very, very objective. It's really um, uh, this current market condition recorded and then just projected here historically so you get the entire view, okay? And uh, that is a lot more transparency than these candlesticks, okay? So uh, even, it, even the... Um, uh, looking at the, um, uh, I don't know, if you're reading market profile or if you're reading, uh, um, uh, you know, volume profile or um, uh, looking at, um, uh, you know, specific indicators, uh, you know, like, like I mentioned before, I mean, this is uh, giving you uh, really, you know, a complete picture of the market. It's, it's not a derivative. Uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, something that is just factual data. This is what occurred. This is their intent, uh, and we can start to read it uh, in, in the auction. Okay. Okay. So uh, putting all those pieces together, well, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's take a look here. Um, you know, we're looking for is, uh, you know, buying pressure looks pretty good here. I, I like that there's, there's volume trading up here. I think we're going to test 95. Okay. Because, uh, we see buyers are still engaged here. They're selling too. No, no question. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, we, uh, I see a little bit of buying pressure here. Look over in this area here. We see more buying pressure as well. Look at these areas down here, the sellers kind of drying up a bit. All right, we see a little more buying here, and we can see them lift the offer in this area. It looks good for continuation to the upside, okay? That's just by reading the volume, okay? Uh, now, let's put that together with the heat map uh, and start to gauge their intent. And we've already done that. We can see that actually now they're getting really interested here at this 94 and 3 quarters, 1,600 contracts. It was 1,400 before. Uh, I can see that change here. Okay, right here in the striation, here's four, or thir 13 to 1400, and then it jumps up into 1663. Right, so now we're starting to engage their intent here, and it looks like they want to they want to sell. Okay, so these buyers, we might start to see them dry up a little bit now. Uh, so it's it's adding a little more complexity uh, to that uh, uh, that uh, picture I was uh, uh, starting to uh, outline for testing 95. Okay, it's a little more, um, um, uh, less less sure, I would say. We can still test it, uh, but um, uh, all I'm uh, starting to analyze uh, is their intent to trade here. And I know that they want to trade. Okay, so if the buyers want to take them on, they need to trade through all of these 1,600 contracts on uh, two price levels. All right? Okay. So that said, I've uh, got a few more minutes here. Let's take a look at NASDAQ and do the same thing. Okay, NASDAQ looks pretty good. Look at the, uh, this is a phenomenon that we cover in the um, uh, advanced uh, webinars, and I can show you a video for it as well. Uh, this is a flip of the book of liquidity. Look how we're channeling in this area here between high areas of liquidity on the bid here uh, and then on the offer up in this area. Okay. Look how we broke through that area with aggressive buying. Okay, the uh, initiated buyers came in here and pulled price up out of the range, and then they flipped their liquidity from the offer to the bid, and we are now in a new range. Okay, this is something we see frequently, and um, uh, I, I don't want to overwhelm you guys because uh, we're we're just going through the basics here. Uh, but uh, you asked for the analysis on the NQ. Uh, that's what I'm seeing so far. Okay, uh, and uh, that's that's a bigger bigger picture overview. There's a little bit of selling right here, uh, but uh, buying up here. So I think we we'll kind of go sideways for a little bit here. Um, uh, anyway, uh, oil. Let's take a jump over and take a look at oil. Oil's been bullish. Uh, let's see here. 
yeah, I think uh, we may uh, let's see if we get. Uh, Yeah, I like this cluster of volume down here, but I see also up here a nice cluster. We've come back up and tested. Okay. Yeah, I think we're probably going to come up and test 50, 50, 50 again. Okay. Just based on, uh, you know, simple stuff that I'm looking at very, very quickly here. All right. Still bullish, still holding structure. Uh, here comes sellers. Okay. But um, uh, if the seller, this, if the sellers take control here, well, what they've got to do is they got to get down below this area, uh, and we got to see more aggressive selling here. Okay, and why do I say that? Right, because look at the move to the upside. More aggressive buying, more aggressive buying it leads to that breakout to the upside. More best aggressive buying here. Uh, actually, uh, here we see a little bit of a retreat on that, but then they uh, they break above and more best aggressive buying, and we see a nice pop to the 50 50 half figure up here. Okay, oh, we might be seeing uh, an order flow switch here. We're starting to see some more sellers starting to jump in here, uh, and uh, and the sellers. Uh, well, what about uh, on the on the bid and the offer? Uh, where are they lined up? I'm not getting too much insight here. There we go. There we go. Just need to change that quickly. And um, okay, buyers are pretty aggressive here, uh, and they're also down here at fifty thirty. Okay, all, all sorts of stuff uh, to to look at and go over. Um, you know, I'm I would kind of anticipate a, a a a move back up here into this area, and then we'll see if those aggressive buyers come back in yet again. Uh, but this would be the retest area right here, uh, probably around um, uh, I don't know 50, 39, something like that. Uh, let's see if we get that retest, uh, and. Um, uh, and then uh, we might get one more push to just grab liquidity down below here around uh, maybe 5330 or 5030 I'm sorry okay. maybe even a bit lower because uh, this is where we really broke from down here at 25 hey okay, I can see the volume here uh, but I don't see them lining up in the limit order book yet okay anyway just some basic stuff uh, for a few different markets uh, and um, uh, let's call it a day and jump over to the next one. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.